So back in 2016, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we had our two greatest heroes clash in the epic Captain America Civil War story. One of the best movies in the MCU and very much a setup for the rest of the movies that take place of Phase 3 in the MCU. But sadly, back in the DC world, Zack Snyder decided he wanted to make a movie. So we had another movie where two well-known heroes clash, Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill. Yeah, I refuse to call them Batman and Superman. Anyways, I saw this movie one time and I hated it. Like it was one of the most terrible superhero movies I've ever seen. And one thing that made this movie so unlikable for me was how confusing it was. One thing that irritates me when I watch movies with people are people who ask questions during the film. I always tell people, all your questions will be answered simply by watching the movie. So naturally, when I was watching this movie and I had questions, that's what I think to myself. Jeremiah, just watch the movie. All your questions will be answered. But with this particular movie, the more I watched, the more confused I got, and the more questions that I had that were ultimately left unanswered. So here are some of those questions that I had. Question number one, what happened to Wayne Manor? In the Dawn of Justice movie, the Wayne family mansion is destroyed. It looks like an open, rotting wound. What happened to it? Bruce Wayne lives in this little lake house, which looks nice. I mean, it really does. I would love to have a place like this. It looks beautiful and the location looks nice, remote and secluded. But we're talking about billionaire Bruce Wayne here. One of the richest, most powerful men in the world. Why is he living here? When I first saw this movie, I actually thought, my first thought was maybe Bruce had ran out of money or something. But nope, that's not the case. He's just living here and the Wayne mansion is destroyed. In the Dark Knight movie, Bruce was living in his penthouse in Gotham City, and we know why. It's because of the events of Batman Begins with Ra's al Ghul burning down his home. So it makes sense, while it's being rebuilt, Bruce lives in a penthouse. He's not living in Wayne Manor, because it's being rebuilt. And by the time we get to The Dark Knight Rises, it's fully rebuilt, and Bruce is back in it. But you know, that's the good stuff. That's good storytelling. In Snyder's universe, you know, there is no Batman story prequel to the Dawn of Justice movie. So I have no idea why Wayne Manor looks like this. And again, it's not like he doesn't have the money to fix it. So whatever happened to it, why didn't he fix it? Oh, I hope the next generation of Waynes won't inherit an empty wine cellar. Not that there's likely to be a next generation. Thank you, sir. Question number two. Who is Jack? In the beginning of the film, we see Bruce Wayne in Metropolis while the events of the Man of Steel are taking place. And he's on his way to his company and he's talking to somebody on the phone named Jack. Well, because of Superman fighting Zod, all the destruction and the chaos causes the building to collapse on him and Jack dies. Am I God? Creator of heaven and earth. Have mercy on my soul. Bruce is all torn up about it. In fact, 
the scene is kind of sad and powerful, and it's cool to see Superman fighting Zod from a civilian's perspective. But who is this Jack guy? The way Bruce acts over him, he couldn't just be a regular employee. Is he supposed to be this universe's Lucius Fox? I think that would have been better, in fact, to kill Fox off in this universe. That would have had a bigger impact on the audience. Like, dang, they killed Lucius. Because, you know, Lucius Fox is special. He's Bruce Wayne's right-hand man. He runs his companies, and he's Wayne's go-to guy for all the Bat's shadow tech. Kevlar utility harness, gas-powered magnetic grapple gun, the 350-pound test monofilament. Hardened Kevlar plates over titanium-dipped tri-weave fibers for flexibility. They'll be lighter, faster, more agile. Perhaps you should read the instructions first. But again, who is this guy? Question three, why is Batman a homicidal maniac? Batman does not kill people. It's the one line he will not cross. It's what separates him from the scum that he faces. I'm no executioner. Your compassion is a weakness your enemies will not share. That's why it's so important. It separates us from them. But forget that. Because in this movie, he's killing everybody. Like he's really out here killing people, kicking ass and taking lives. And he's branding people too, and the people he brands get killed in prison. Hell, he nearly kills Superman. I hate this because the real Batman does not kill. But why is this Aflac fake version like this? Did he ever have a no kill rule? And if so, what made him go out the deep end and become this insane psycho freak? <laughs> Question four. Why is Superman so pointless? We see fake Batman in pursuit of some Russian bad guys and he's chasing them for a while and they turn a corner and Batman follows. And when Bats gets around the corner, Superman is standing right there. Was he standing there this whole time, just waiting? Did he just get there? And what happened to the Russian guys? Did they get away from Superman? How could they? The guy's faster than a speeding bullet. It's like they just disappeared and the movie forgets the whole plot just so we could have Batman see Superman and have them meet each other. That's what I call poor lazy writing. In the animated series, our heroes meet when Batman's in Metropolis and Superman sees him interrogating the suspect too hard. Where's the Joker? Who knows? Making haha -ha with Harley Quinn. I don't know, honest. I never went back after he muscled in. I don't want nothing to do with that clown. That's enough. I think you got your answer. I heard you were crazy. I didn't think you were stupid. Isn't that way cooler and makes more sense? That's why I like the cartoons better than the movies, because these people like Zack Snyder or Matt Reese, they have no idea what they're doing. And look at the way that Batman looks at Clark. Why is he looking at him like that? He's looking at him like he's an eight-year-old kid who's seeing a naked woman for the first time in his life. Question 5. How did Bruce know that Superman would fight him? I know this movie is called Batman vs. Superman, but in this film, Bruce and Clark never discuss fighting each other. That's my biggest problem with this movie. This thing is three hours long, and not once did Bruce and Clark discuss fighting each other. 
Bruce prepares to fight Superman, and we see him getting ready and standing in his Kryptonian Buster mech suit waiting for Clark. But Superman only went to Gotham because Jesse Eisenberg kidnapped his mom. I'm really not calling him Lex Luthor because if you take a look at DCAU Luthor, then you take a look at Donna Justice Luthor, it's like, what the hell? Leave me and my operations alone, and I and my little green rock will leave you alone. I don't make deals with criminals. I control everything in this town, Superman. Your cooperation is not really necessary. The offer was merely a courtesy. You will never control me, Luthor. Never! Well then, I guess I'll have to kill you. Hmm, Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent. I love it. I love bringing people together. How are we? Lex. Hi, hello. Lex, it is a pleasure. Ow, wow, that is a good grip. You should not pick a fight with this person. Anyways, my point is, if Jesse didn't kidnap fake Clark's mom and force him to go to Gotham to fight Bats, would Bats just be standing in the dark that whole time in that clunky metal suit in that alley just waiting for Superman to show up? Because there was no dialogue between them to suggest that they would fight each other. If two people were going to fight each other, they should know that they're fighting each other. But, and I'm not saying that everything in this movie has to be drawn out and talked about, but don't you think something like that, the big climax, the whole thing that this movie's about, them two fighting, should be talked about between them two? We have Bruce training and getting ready to fight Superman, and then we have Jesse kidnap Clark's mom. But Superman didn't know that was going to happen. He didn't know that Jesse was going to kidnap his mom and force him to fight Batman. That just happens. They they just show up. So my point is, Batman knew he was going to fight Superman, but Superman didn't know he was going to fight Batman. So how did Bruce know that this would happen? I've never been so confused before in my life. I've been confused since 2016. It's annoying. Superman's not mind controlled or anything, so it's not even like Batman really has to fight him. He's choosing to. You know, in this movie, Bruce really hates Clark. My guess is because in some way he was responsible for killing Jack. But who is Jack? Question six. Just like that, they're supposed to be cool? So just this fake Batman is about to kill the knockoff Captain America, Clark says, You're letting him kill Martha. What does that mean? Why did you say that name? Find him. Save Martha. Bruce remembers that his mom was also named Martha, so he can't let her die. I get the kind of emotional impact and all that, and that's kind of good. However, just like that, they're cool. Batman was about to kill this guy. Superman didn't even do anything to warrant this kind of abuse. What'd he do? Stop General Zod from destroying the Earth and in the process accidentally killing Jack? Who's Jack? He's a nobody. But Bruce is literally standing on this guy's neck, getting ready to kill him, and because their moms share the same name, he doesn't do it. After everything they've been through, all the fighting, all the bad blood and hate towards one another, that's literally standing on him getting ready to end his whole career. That's all it took. Martha. Good grief. And then, to add insult to injury, when he does save Martha, he has the audacity to tell her that him and Clark are friends. Okay. I'm a friend of your sons. I figured 
The cape? Seriously? Five minutes ago, you were ready to kill him. Now he's your friend. Okay. This movie is just filled with poor writing and poor choices. From the story, to the actors, to the director, especially. I don't understand what was going on through their heads as they were making this film. Like, has anybody on the team ever read a comic book before? What Marvel, what it took Marvel four years to do from Iron Man to the Avengers, Zack Snyder tried to do with one movie, which is why it's three hours long and it's just completely confusing. So many questions, so many unanswered questions, it's annoying. Visually, it looks great. If you just watch the trailer, it'll make you want to see the movie. Visually, the, the CGI and everything looks fantastic. But what good are looks when your story sucks? It sucks because this movie could have been so much better if they had made different choices. Ben Affleck actually wasn't terrible. He just had a terrible script. You know, like I said, if they made different choices, this movie could have not only looked great, but actually been great. But it is what it is. Those are some of the questions I have. If anybody has any answers to those questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Because like I've said, I've been confused since 2016 over some of these topics. I have no idea. I've looked them up and I've found no answer. So if anybody has any answers to any of these six questions, please let me know. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff.